If I could describe to give my life tour in one word, it would be vulnerability. Showing up for yourself is so important. Welcome to the Give My Life Tour. I'm your host, Lydia T. Blanco. Welcome to the Get My Life Tour. I'm your host, Lydia T. Blanco, and I am so excited that you decided to join me on this stop of the tour. If this is your first time tuning in, welcome to the Get My Life Tour. Bienvenidos a la Get My Life Tour. I don't know how to say welcome in any other language, but I'm so glad that you are here. I am in Harlem, taking center stage by myself to talk about visibility and the nuances of it and all that I've learned in making myself more visible. And I really hope that today on this stop, you are able to get the gems and nuggets of information that you need on your journey and as you continue to take center stage and show up for yourself. So without further ado, let's just jump right into it. You know, I always have a story to tell, right? So at the end of 2018, I decided that some things needed to shift for me personally and professionally. And a lot of that meant opening up. And one of the ways that that looked like for me was to be more visible. So as a media professional, a storyteller, this outspoken yet gentle person, I decided that I wanted to be more visible. I feel like for a lot of my life, I had been hiding in the background, you know, as a producer, as a writer, as so many things. But as someone who has always wanted to take center stage, I was like, you know what? It's now or never. So the end of 2018, I was like, Lydia, you are going to become more visible. And it was a radical act for me because as I said that to myself, I was really pushing myself to see myself. Like we always say, I see you. Oh, I see you. Oh, okay. I see you. But seeing yourself is is way more difficult and complex than what people make it seem like it is. It's actually harder to see yourself, okay? Like, when you think about what it requires to see yourself, oftentimes it's a mirror, right? Or maybe you see yourself in your friends or your parents um, or in your work. But the amount of effort that is required for you to see yourself is... Ooh, it's a lot of effort, okay? And that is something that I took on and took very seriously in the last quarter of 2018 and really pushed myself to do this year. And, you know, I think about all the things that are required when you take center stage, and it's, there's so much. You know, being visible to yourself is so radical because there's so much that we hide behind. We hide behind our professions. We hide behind our education, our beliefs, religions, and thoughts, our family history, legacy, traditions, cultures. There's so many things for us to hide behind. And in hiding... You know, there are so many people who benefit from that. I feel like there are people who literally are the beneficiaries of those who choose to hide. And quite frankly, I got tired of hiding. I was like, you know what, Lydia? You're dope. Other people know you're dope. Some people know you're dope and they don't really like it. And that has nothing to do with you. And I was like, hmm, Okay. And, you know, I just I really have to put in, you know, this honest clause because recording this episode has been extremely difficult for me. I have stopped and started and stopped and started and called um, and received prayer because I was like, I really don't even know what I'm trying to say. But I feel like there's this attack because this is something that's really important for me. And I had to literally take a step back from the mic my computer, my software, 
and drink some water and think about what message I wanted to share with you all today because in being visible, there is so much that you are exposed to mentally, spiritually, emotionally, and a lot of that is because of how vulnerable you choose to be in being visible. So I really want to dive into that on this stop of the tour because it's something that is so is so real. When I think about the commitment that I made at the end of last year and really putting that plan into action this year, I think about the fear, the natural fear that came with the unknown of being visible. I decided that I was going to share my journey, you know, professionally and personally who I am and put myself out there and kind of let my wall down in order to let people in and connect with people online and offline in a very authentic way. But a lot of that came with fear. I was like, how am I going to be received? How do I editorialize, you know, my feeds? How do I make what I'm doing where I am relevant to, you know, those who may be following or may be interested in connecting. There were so many questions and so many um, different kind of fears that showed up in my effort or during my effort to become more visible. And I don't know what your experience has been like. I am not someone who aspires to be an influence or anything, but I do believe that the calling of my life is great and I want to share with people and there are people who need to see and hear from me and the same may be true for you as well. So if you're weighing, you know, the scale on whether or not you should become more visible, I would, you know, take a few things into consideration and write some things down because exposure is just that, right? And you never know what it is that you are exposing yourself to or who you're exposing yourself to and what that exposure is going to do to and for you. There are so many things that you can't anticipate when being visible. That is why so many fears of the unknown um, popped up for me. Another thing that I had to come to you know, terms with is that seeing yourself can be alarming for people who benefit from you not seeing yourself and your potential and how great you are. You know, if you are someone who has, you know, played it small, like I said, someone has benefited from that. So the moment you decide that you are going to take center stage, there are going to be people who not only don't want to see you win, but don't want you to see yourself. You know, I believe we are people who are made in the likeness of the most high. And that is so powerful. So think about the power that you possess when you show up in your fullness as who you are. That can be alarming for a lot of people. And I know that it shouldn't be that way necessarily. But you know what I'm saying? When you when you see you and you decide to do you and share that with other people, there are going to be people who most definitely are like, "Mm, mm," right? And to that point, I want to say, you know, in being visible, you can't pay attention to everyone who is paying attention to you. You know, there are so many analytics out there that you can look at. You can see who views your story, who clicked this and that and liked and comment, shared, subscribed, all these other things. There is a, a line that you have to cross. Every analytic can't carry weight. And you cannot pay attention to everyone who is paying attention to you. You know, what comes to mind is that the devil is in the details, right? So many people use those um, words for a number of things to justify a number of things or make sense out of some things, right? Right. In the way that I want to use that is that sometimes when we pay too close attention to things that don't matter, we can make sense out of things, but they aren't things that we're supposed to be paying attention to. 
one of the ways that I use my analytics is to see who I should probably be reaching out to based on how many times they looked at my story or how many times they've engaged with something that I've put up. And while that is a very effective strategy for connecting with people, I feel like it can also be very, um, hmm, what's my word? It could be something that we become fixated on that is very distracting, right? So there is someone who I'm like interested in knowing why they watch everything I do so closely, right? I'm like, hmm, I don't know if they see me as their competition or if they think what I'm doing is dope, but they have yet to reach out to me. And I had to make a decision. I was like, you know what, Lydia, I'm not going to focus on that because that is a distraction. You know what it is that you're supposed to be doing. You can have fun. You can be professional. You can use your vernacular and all these other things. But what you can't do is waste your time on trying to figure out why someone is watching you so closely. So, again, for the third time, just in case you didn't catch it the first two times, I said it. You can't pay attention to everyone who was paying attention to you. You know, especially on social media, there are so many tools and things out there. But, you know, you got to keep it moving at some point. And as you keep it moving, it's important that you do not lose your footing and that you remain grounded. There are so many people who are doing it for the gram or the Facebook or whatever else sounds cool when you say you're doing it for that, right? But you got to make sure that you're doing it for the right reason. A lot of me being visible is to put myself on. For so long, I've worked with my head down, thinking that other people would notice how hard I was working. I was like, okay, I'm working so hard. This is going to be great. Someone's going to see me one day walking past my desk or this or that or on a, on a shoot. And then it dawned on me, like, you don't get ahead by working with your head down and other people are out there, you know, branding themselves and putting themselves out there, sometimes on pedestals they don't belong on because they're just so good at talking about what they do. And being grounded will get you so much further than those who are standing on a pedestal that they put themselves on. You know, sometimes we get center stage and we lose focus of why we are there. We're no longer performing for a crowd of one. We're performing for everyone else. We're doing, you know, the, I feel like some people are rehearsing or they are literally reciting someone else's work and they've completely lost their footing. You know, you have to remain grounded while you are visible. Be who you are intentionally. Remain authentic. Stay true to yourself. All these things, because that is what is going to set you apart. You know, I'm quirky. I think I'm funny. Some people think I'm funny, too, y'all. And I'm like real rap all the time. The same way I talk to... You know, one person is the same way I talk to the next. Of course, there's order, respect, and all these other things, right? But at the end of the day, like, the Lydia that y'all get on to get my life tour is the Lydia that someone else is going to get wherever they engage with me at. And that's just what it is. You know, I always find it interesting when people are surprised that I am the same person offline that I am online. I used to think that being curated online was like a bad thing, but now I understand why you have to editorialize, you know, your feed and, you know, the content that you put out there when you are making an effort and being intentional about being visible. You know, there's like this presumed familiarity that I encounter a lot with people who engage with me online. Like they meet me and they're like, oh my gosh, because girl, and I'm like, hey, I'm Lydia. It's so nice to meet you. You have to bring people back because they think they know you, right? So there are like boundaries that you have to set. And I used to always wonder why women who I admired online would be a little bit standoffish. And I think it's because they figured that out a long time ago. And as I am becoming more visible and, you know, name recognition and brand recognition and things of that nature um, become more and more prevalent, I realize that, okay, there are some boundaries that I have to set and that people appreciate who I am and appreciate me being who I am consistently, both on and offline, but I still have to draw the line with people. Like, 
I know you've been following me for three years, but we ain't been friends for three years. Um, and it's a way for you to protect your peace, right? I am not a celebrity, y'all. I'm not. You know that. I know that. We know that. Okay. And that's perfectly fine. But there are people who will hype you up like you are such, put you on a pedestal, and then knock you down real quick. Okay. And that's why it's so important to remain grounded and set boundaries and not engage with people in a way that is pretentious and unrealistic. If you know someone, you know them. If you don't, you don't. And that's something that you really have to be mindful of as you become more visible because it's just something that happens, you know, quite often, you know, curation is real. Like Beyonce curates her life to a T for us. We do not know. Beyonce, Giselle, Nose Carter. Like, we just do not. I wish I did. Hey, hey, Beyonce, if you ever listen to this, um, maybe not. Okay, great. But we don't know her. In the same way that, you know, we don't know Queen B. a lot of us don't know one another. So we have to set those boundaries, um, especially as, you know, people are paying attention to you and they're clapping for you or whatever else. You never know why someone is clapping for you. And, you know, the same people who root for you will also turn their backs on you with the quickness. Like, you know what's up. Look, we're going to talk about visibility and a couple other things. Like, we're not going to to get my life to her, y'all. Y'all know what's up. To that point, I think it's really important to know that in being visible, there will be opposition. Just with anything that you do that is great, there's always going to be someone or something that is trying to hold you back. And with that also comes opportunity, right? There may be something that's against you, but there's also something that is for you. And in having a conversation with my sister, I told you she comes up in every episode because we just that close. I was telling her how difficult it was for me to record this episode. And she was just like, girl, that's because X, Y, and Z. And I was like, you know what? You right. I'm like, okay. So let me go back to the drawing board and do this because I almost became discouraged in talking about this because I was like, I don't want to make myself out to be somebody that I'm not. I want, I don't want to paint this picture that, you know, I've been doing this for 400 years and have written a guide on how to do this. No, but there is something very valuable and significant about my journey. And I wanted to share that with you, but I was facing opposition in how I was going to deliver this message. But you know what? That is proof of itself. And I just want you to know that when you put yourself out there, you know, it's going to be real. There are going to be times where you feel like the world, the world is like with you. And you're going to feel like there's times where everyone, I mean, everyone is against you. Like, it's real. I really don't know how to, you know, sum it up more than that. But if you feel me, you feel me. And if you feel me, let me know. Um, Of course, when I put this up online, I want you to engage with me because I want to know, like, what opposition have you faced from being visible, from shining? You know what I'm saying? Everybody don't want to see you shine. And a lot of people can't even stand, like literally can't bear standing in your light. You know what I'm saying? So that's what I'm saying. That is exactly what I'm saying. A lot of people cannot bear your brightness. Like there aren't sunglasses. There is no LASIK. There is nothing that can prepare them, not even their heart to stand in your light, right? So they may be the person who tries to create shadows for you or whatever, may block your light, dim your light, whatever. This little light of yours, let it shine, okay? There is always someone watching you, trying to figure out your next move, trying to figure out how you did what you did. And in that, I know people often say the highest form of flattery is imitation, And oh, y'all, imitation like makes my skin crawl. Oh, it makes my skin crawl. Does it make your skin crawl? It most definitely makes me itch when people are watching you so closely um, and then end up 
attempting to do what you do. But you know what? Coriel DeBose, a uh, workplace slave, she is so dope. And she actually put up something recently. And it was to the extent that, you know, you have to stop being around people who want to be you. And in being visible, that is one of my biggest fears that there is someone watching me so closely that they are like, you know, somehow trying to morph into me or doing um, or end up doing what I do. Right. But to that, I have to always remember, and it's important for you to remember that no one can outdo you being you. If you are on assignment, if you have a unique calling on your life, if you are living the life you were created to live, no one can outdo that. Like that is unmatched. The most high is so, you know, unique and so powerful in giving us our assignments and in all of that, no one can do what you were called to do here on this earth unless you absolutely don't do it. But even then, I believe that it will be undone. So just keep that with you. Keep that in your back pocket. You know what I'm saying? That one was free. Something else that I want to share is that you have to remember that you are your own competition. And there will be times where people will put you in a category where they see you as their competition. It has nothing to do with you, like absolutely nothing to do with you. But you have to remain that you are on in your own lane and that you are your own competition. When I decided that I was going to become more visible, it was because it was something that I needed to do for myself. I wasn't thinking about anyone else. You know, there are so many dope women who I follow, dope men who I follow, and they're doing great things. And that is so great for them. I clap for them. I root for them. I'm like, woo, yeah, I says, okay, where I see you, uh-huh, all of that. But I needed to do something for myself. I wanted to prove to myself that I could be consistent in sharing and learning and doing. Those are not things that I have always done publicly. And I wanted to present myself with that challenge. And I'm so glad that I have because I've been able to connect with people internationally who are doing some incredible things. And me showing up the way that I have has been for me and for those, you know, who may need to hear from me and things of that nature, but I am my own competition. I remember having a conversation with someone in a very intimate setting in the bathroom. I guess it wasn't that intimate, but I guess so. The bathroom's pretty intimate place, right? Um, but we were in a bathroom, in a ladies room, and we were having a conversation about a myriad of things. And I had to look her in the face and tell her, like, I know how you feel about me, but I am not your competition. And I was really surprised that I said that out loud, but it was something that I needed to say. And I was just like, I don't know who made you think X, Y, and Z, or what made you think X, Y, and Z, or if it was me. But I am not your competition. So many of us need to have those conversations with people who kind of think that we are out to get what they have. Like what they have is not for you. And if you are competing with them, you need to reevaluate why you are. There is enough room for a number of people to win. Like, yes, slay in your lane, but also like. Focus on what you've been called to do. Like, there are too many distractions, and one of them is comparison. And this false sense of competition that so many of us create. Be your own competition, outdo yourself, and make it count. As you make it count, also know that done is better than perfect. I've said that before, and I've shared before that, a mentor of mine once told me that perfection is the enemy of greatness. And it is something that I love sharing with other people because it is something that has helped me tremendously throughout life and on my Get My Life tour. And, you know, there is so much that we have to curate in order to protect our peace. And I know I touched on that earlier, but what I'm getting at here is that in all of your glory, in all of your visibility, it is important to remain consistent. And a part of that consistency is being okay with not always being okay. 
I feel like this episode, my tonality is a little different. My energy most definitely is a little different. I'm excited, but I'm also exhausted just given the nature of a lot of the work that I've been doing lately. But my commitment and my excitement about this give my life tour and you all who are so committed to tuning in. Oh my gosh, it keeps me fired up. But I have to say that a part of being visible is knowing that it is okay to not always be okay, even in your visibility. Like when you are center stage, there is nothing wrong with taking a deep breath if that is what you need to do. And I say that because so many of us think that we have to keep going and going and going and going and that we have to make sure that we always put up the best pictures, the best posts and always be inspirational even when we're not feeling our best or show up to spaces and it feels like we've gotten into a fight before we got to the space and we're trying to put ourselves together knowing we look a hot mess, okay? So it is okay to not always be okay even when you're visible it is okay to be like you know what today is not the best day and I'm not feeling my best my energy is a little off and I'd rather not and you can talk about that I, I challenge you to find creative ways to talk about you know your mental health and wellness if that is something you feel comfortable doing you know, I have with Love Lydia Wednesdays and that was another way that I was challenging myself to be visible, but be consistent publicly. I launched that actually back in March. And every Wednesday, even when I am not feeling my best, I will put something up. And, you know, I now know that it is okay. Now I'm not into the whole sad girl or sad guy culture. I know that it is a real thing in the social age. But there is something powerful about being candid, about being honest, and about being real about where you are. Um, and that is completely okay. Like today, y'all, I am not feeling my best. Okay, I had a long week and an even longer weekend. And I was like, okay, this feels a little weird talking about this today because I would love to talk about something else, but we're not there yet in a tour. Okay. Um, but it's okay to not be okay. I know you've probably seen it on a t-shirt, a mug, a Tumblr, on Tumblr, on Twitter, on your Instagram timeline, and whatever other platform you've been on before, right? But it is really important to know that you don't always have to be on and you don't always have to be center stage, even in your pursuit to be visible. You know, in entitling this episode the cost of being visible i think about currencies there's so many different currencies out there and visibility i think is a currency it is also something that can be seen as a privilege as well right not everyone gets to be seen not everyone gets to be heard when i think about my work as a journalist it is to amplify the voices of black and marginalized people you know I'm all here for social justice, equity, and wealth, and these incredible things that we have not always had access to. But I think about this podcast, and I'm like, whoa, it is a privilege, a true privilege to have voice. You know, and with my sense of agency, and with me now being more visible, I want to say that it is a real responsibility that those of us who have something to say, take seriously. And I know I'm getting all like, you know, matter of fact right now. Uh, Oh, I I feel like I sound real California on that one. But um, in all seriousness, there is a responsibility that comes with being visible. With influence comes great responsibility. And if you are someone who is putting out into the universe or praying for, you know, the ability to reach the multitude, you have to take that seriously and really pursue character over celebrity and all these other things. There's so much that comes with being visible, but there's always someone watching you and you have to be mindful of the impact that you could potentially have on someone else's life. You know, I really take this podcast and to get my life towards seriously. Seriously, for so long, black women, black people 
have been excluded from having certain lifestyles. And I think about the importance of lifestyle to me, and it's about equity and wealth and wellness and stability and so many other things. So I have to be very intentional and careful about what I say and what I put out there. You know, our digital footprints are everlasting. They are super, super serious. And I have to, you know, take this seriously. And I want to encourage everyone who is, you know, influential um, and those who are pursuing visibility to take those things seriously. I know I've said a lot and I've been thinking about my mic drop moment and it's not very long at all this week because, you know, you got to drop the mic and leave it. But my mic drop moment for this week is when you see yourself, others will see you differently. I know I'm supposed to just drop the mic and not expound. But for the sake of the podcast and content, I think that there is real power in seeing yourself. You know, it's so hard standing in front of a mirror and confronting what you see. And then when you sit there in silence, confronting who you are in your mind, right? Um, Seeing yourself is so powerful. No one will ever see you the way you see yourself. They can get a glimpse. You can give them perspective. But when you see yourself, it really calls you to a different level. It is something that I feel like will have you operate on a different vibration and it will allow others to see and engage with you differently. You know what? That's all that I have for you this week. I really hope that you are able to take some of the gems that I've dropped. Um, If you consider them to be gems at all, right? Let me not second guess myself. I hope that you take some of the gems that I've dropped and apply them and really reevaluate how you are showing up and what that means and what impact that has on you because there's so much that comes with being visible. And I know that I'm not alone in this. Sometimes we come out of hiding and we go right back in. And I want to encourage you to see yourself. So until we meet again, stay grounded, stay encouraged, and stay connected with me at the Get My Life Tour and at Lydia T. Blanco on all social platforms. It has been great. I see you. Peace.